for you all this morning. Uh, I don't know what the fuss is, there's so many people here, but we're all here. I guess if I give you a really bad slam, you'll have to sack me at the end of the night. Let's hear the psalms. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O servants of the Lord. Praise him, O you servants of the Lord. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, for his special treasure. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, Help us to cast aside all that, that which uh, may prevent us from worshipping you this morning. Let us come before your throne of grace with humble and contrite hearts. Extinguish any embers of malice and covetousness that may be smouldering in our hearts as we are bowed before you. Prepare us in every way heart, soul, and mind, to receive your guidance through your word this morning. May we truly recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit as he communicates with the indwelling Spirit of Christ in our hearts. May blessing and honor, thanksgiving, praise more than we can utter, more than we can conceive, be unto you, most holy, glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, by all angels, by all people, and all creatures, forever and ever. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn of praise this morning, I pray that you all have a little bulletin of the words of the hymns in it. The first hymn of praise this morning is hymn number Two hundred and eighty four. Lord, your word shall guide us.
these are certainly uncertain times. Today is Sanzac Day. This is a day we, we remember our service men and women. Uh, we also remember those who served in the Home Army, those who didn't go off to war but served in, on farms and, and whatnot in this country. It's also a day to remember the wives and the children who were left behind, uh, not knowing uh, whether they would see a husband, a father, or a grandfather again. And, and, and the times of a great difficulty that they suffered. We're at peace now, but for a church, the true church of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, we are still at war. Now, we are called our Christian soldiers because the, the life of the Christian church is a life of spiritual warfare. And so the battle goes on, the battle goes on. It's a time of uncertainty for you as a congregation. For well, this is the last day of, of a settled appointment, uh, and there'll be a, a period of vacancy ahead, and it'll be a time of uncertainty. Who, who will come? Who will the Lord raise up? Will the Lord? We know that the Lord will raise up the right one, but will we choose the right one? That's that's the troubling thing, isn't it? That's the troubling thing. So hence, uh, picking that uh, that hymn, 284, Lord, your word shall guide us. The thing that's going to guide you as a congregation through the days ahead, regardless of who would stand in this pulpit. The thing that's going to guide you through your, your Christian life and your spiritual work will be and always will be only the word of God. And so we pray that God would raise up and you would recognise a godly preacher who regardless of what would happen, that they would make that the, the paramount thing in their, in, their, in their service to you, in their service to the Lord Jesus Christ, that they would be faithful preachers of the Word of God, that they would be faithful interpreters of the Word of God, and they would put their trust completely in their risen Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Um, pray a, a prayer of um, adoration and confession at this time. Let's pray. <coughs> Our gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, it seems like it, it's it's said. Uh, or wrote, or wrote, or by repetition. But Father, your majesty, your sovereignty, your omnipotence, your omniscience, your omnipresence is indescribable. And, and so, Lord, each week I struggle when it comes to offer up prayers of adoration. And at times like this morning, Lord, it is just a, a plea and, 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 a, and a trust in your promise to us that the Spirit knows the groanings of our hearts. The words fail us or fail me. And so I simply say thank you, Father. Know my heart, know my, uh, the feelings of my heart. Sometimes, Father, we, we struggle with, with conveying to the people we love most how much we love them. We don't know, Father, whether we're embarrassed or we're shy or we don't want to make ourselves that vulnerable. I feel it happens in our spiritual life. Sometimes we're, we're a bit too timid, too afraid to just expose ourselves to, to your withering blast, to your, your, your inspection. And so I hear these stumbling words, this feeble, finite attempts to express our love 
adoration and devotion unto you. Father, I, I confess that at times we are fearful of man. We are fearful of what people may think of us, what they may say of us. When we, when we express our faith and trust in you, that we jettison all confidence in our own strength and our own abilities. So Father, I confess that at times we have, our hearts have failed us. We have been more fearful of man rather than you. Confess, Father, there are times when each one of us at some stage have let an opportunity go past where we could have defended the faith, where we could have presented the gospel, or we could have said no to the encouragement of the world to participate in that which we know is his godless and certainly not glorifying unto you. So Father, hear our prayer of confession. Father, I pray that we would be bold in this, that we don't try to justify those sins which we know are in want of conformity to your word and your purpose for us. Father, help us to realise that our prayer of confession is to you. It is to you through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So our confession to you can be so private, so intimate. Our prayers of confession are not always for all people's ears. They are for your ears. For, your, for, for, the, for the soul that we need for our hearts. Father, we confess there are times we do need to confess publicly, but that's for those sins we've committed publicly in the offences. So, Father, help us to be brave. Help us to find that time each day to find a, a metaphorical fig tree or a prayer cloth, whatever you want to call it. That place we have, that space we have a little bit of a, a time to ourselves. That we, can, that we can share in sweet communion with you. And this I pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The Old Testament reading of this morning is from Psalm 1. Let's hope we said it again. I said, Lex, Lex Berg asked me, was he doing a, a, a reading this morning? He said, yes, you are, Lex. Uh, you're not going to read Psalm 119 and someone said, well, what part? I said, the, the whole lot. <laughs> not realise I meant to say Psalm 19. Uh, as if we're going to read the whole Psalm 119, we'd have to break for lunch <laughs> and go on to the next. Bex is going to read to us from Psalm 19, verses 1 to 14. Let me ask the God's person. Amen. Father, as, as Lex read to, reads to us, from your scripture, the Holy Scripture. May it not, may it not just be just, just something we do, an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading, or whatever, but may this truly be us hearing you speak to us through your word this morning. And Lord, if it challenges us, we praise you for that. If it encourages us, we praise you for that. And Father, we praise you that it will further sanctify our, our walk with, with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Rex. Psalm 19, starting at verse 1. The perfect revelation of the Lord. 
the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day under day utter speech, and night under night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven, and its circuit to the other end. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Thank you, Lex. Let us once more uh, praise our Lord God with the singing of hymn number 571, Teach Me Your Way, O Lord. <laughs>
that with this mighty singer. There's a line that says, teach me your way, and that's the whimsical part, isn't it? You go up and, and the bird way trails off, and so we, we go and let it go. Keep teaching me, Lord. Don't, I don't want it to finish. And that's the Christian life, isn't it? It never finishes. We struggle with it in this life. And when we step into glory, or if the Lord Jesus Christ comes before then, then we'll know all we need to know. Friends, don't be fearful of your Christian life. It's such a delightful thing. And it can be so loving and whimsical along the way. I never, I never ever envisaged, um, I never envisaged my, envisaged my last day as, a, as an appointed or, or a called minister. But I certainly never envisaged my last day that I would be bringing anyone in a community membership on the last day, let alone eight people. And what a blessing. What a blessing to you and what a blessing to me. And what a blessing to this community, to this community, that this would happen. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call eight people up. Now, if you have trouble and you find it uh, discomforting, um, we can write with, with traditions and, and please, you can use these front pews to sit down if you're feeling any discomfort. I'm going to call eight people up. Uh, I guess I'll start at the front and work my way, work my way back. And, and uh, I need to, I'll, I'll pick this side first because there's three on this side. There's Bill and Marlene Dowse, there's Ian Davison, and there's Jeff and Margaret Hayes. Oh, and I really saw right past Jan and Keith Curl. <laughs> I've got blinkers on, I'm sorry, Jan and Keith. Uh, who else am I missing? There's Melinda. Uh, have I got everybody? Yes. Have I got everybody? Have I got for Praise God for that. And I'll also ask the elders to come up the front as well. I can say is offer of a prayer of thanksgiving. So Lord God, let's pray. For our Father in heaven, we are assaulted daily in our senses. So blessed in this country and we take the, the things that we have to participate in especially with COVID-19 as inconveniences and disrupting our plans and our life somewhat. And yet we hear, I heard this morning, that over three million people have been affected in India alone. And Lord, COVID-19 is not a mere inconvenience to them is it's a matter of life and death. But death, all opportunity of salvation is gone for those who are outside of the Lord. So Father, I thank you for a wonderful blessing, blessings that we have every day in this country. Lord, you have given us a habitation in a pleasant place. Father, I thank you that you would send in the first fleet a minister of the gospel, Reverend Johnson, would step on the shores of Australia on that first day and offer up a prayer of thanksgiving and praise to you. That was the day the gospel. That was the day the gospel came to this land. Father, I thank you for that. Father, I thank you for that, that same gospel that has worked so powerfully in the hearts 
of people here this morning, especially hate people, really committed themselves to the work of your church. And so, Father, I praise you and thank you for the multiple blessings we have. Thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. As Peter Bloomfield reminded us yesterday, and someone reminded us yesterday, of the gift of repentance. It's not something we generate within ourselves. It is a gift that has been given to us from you. The gift of faith. We can only have faith if we have the gift of the indwelling spirit. And so, Father, I thank you for all of these things. And, Father, I thank you for this place. Thank you, Father, not to just to give me an opportunity to be a minister somewhere. But it's given these people here an opportunity to minister to me. And so, Father, my thanksgiving this morning is very personal. I thank you for the ministry I've received through these folk here over these last nine years. I thank you that through them, through your word, you have matured me, you have grown me, you have taught me even more about grace. And Father, these people here have given me an opportunity to minister to them. So Father, I thank you for this. I thank you for this. Lord, I, I, it's such a, a privilege and an honour I honour to serve you in any way, but to be the under shepherd, the under pastor that has such a, an influence on the spiritual well being of people is such a high honour, such a privilege, and Father, I thank you for that. And Lord, I, I thank you too for the people you've that you have raised up, not just in my last nine years, but through the life of this congregation. Lord, I think of, of Nell and Keith Myers. Nell here this morning, Keith can't be with us. And the people like John Roth and others who have gone before. who have faithfully served you in this part of your sheepfold. Father, I, I praise and thank you for those you will raise up in the future. Father, I ask now and remonstrate with you that you would give a tremendous spiritual wisdom to the sheep in this congregation. Help the Lord to be bold. Give them the confidence to know when to say yes and when to say no. And may they have a Berean spirit in their hearts so they can discern, they can discern a true shepherd from a false shepherd, from one who comes through the gates from one who would climb over the fence. And Father, I pray that you would give them great spiritual understanding and confidence. And Father, I thank you for them all. And Lord, I'd like to also thank you on this particular day, not very often, but a day that we set aside to remember those who sacrificed so much, even unto death, for our freedom, falls on the Lord's day. And so, Father, I pray that this would be worshipping, worshipful to you. But I offer up a prayer of thanksgiving for our servicemen and women. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. We give all praise and honour to you for restoring us, 
restoring to us the blessings of peace. And deliver us from so sorely provoking you to anger as to inflict upon us such judgment in the future. Teach us to show our gratitude for your goodness by striving constantly to obey your will and help us as individuals, as a nation, to keep the peace and improve the peace which you have granted to the glory of your name, the advancement of your kingdom, the welfare of our nation, and for the good of all mankind. And Father, we remember with gratitude that our freedom has come to us through the sacrifice of many who have stood firm to resist the tyrant and the oppressor Help us never to presume upon your mercies, but remain ever vigilant to defend all that is right and good in our land, that has been hard fought and won for us to enjoy. We especially remember with honour those who paid the supreme sacrifice. We give thanks for their courage under fire, their bravery unto death, and ask that those who grieve for them will find true consolation and comfort through faith in Jesus Christ, in whom we pray. And Father, I pray that you would, that you would raise up godly men, godly men, to guide your church through the days ahead. And Father, I pray, O oh Lord, I pray, that you would raise up a protective hedge around this little congregation here. Father, I pray that they would be brave in the days ahead, and that they would keep their eyes firmly fixed on the Good Shepherd as he leads them through these coming days. And this I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.